Isaiah 25, 6 to 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he may save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. In the message paraphrase of this passage, Eugene Peterson writes, God will banish the shadow of doom darkening all nations. This is a message of hope that the world needs, that we need right now. Welcome to God's Global Feast. Welcome to International Witness Sunday. My name is Jeanette Hansen, Director of Mennonite Church Canada International Witness. Isaiah's vision of the mountain where the people of the world gather for a feast is a big part of his message. Isaiah chapter 2 describes the vision as well. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. In many church traditions, the last Sunday in October is Reformation Sunday. This is a day to commemorate the huge changes that took place after Martin Luther nailed his 95 Thesis on the door of All Saints Church. With the new technology of the printing press, the Thesis were distributed throughout Germany within two weeks and throughout Europe within two months. Luther was largely concerned with the sale of indulgences, the money given to get a person's soul out of purgatory, but he sparked many other reforms in the church, among them the beginnings of the Radical Reformation in the Anabaptists. We will celebrate the 500th year of those beginnings in 2025. So in light of Isaiah's vision, I want to reflect a little on this International Witness Sunday about where the church is now and what God is doing 500 years after the Reformation. In a 2017 article in Mennonite Quarterly Review, John Roth wrote that globalization of Christianity in the course of the 20th century compels us to reconsider the standard narratives of church history. He goes on to say that today the primary actors in the drama of global Christianity are groups who have no particular connection to the Reformation. Ross says for most Christians in the Global South, the central theological issues of the 16th century reformers, debates over freedom of will, for example, or justification by faith, or the sovereignty of God, are far less significant than the biblical themes of poverty and healing, or the living reality of the Holy Spirit, or Christ's call in the Great Commission to share the gospel. For the majority of Christians in the global church, the standard Reformation categories that most European and North American seminaries take for granted are simply not the most relevant points of theological departure." End quote. The emergence of global Christianity is another major shift in church history. This is not just some peripheral, peripheral and interesting phenomena. It is a fundamental change in how we see the history of the church. In some ways, we are living through another reformation, and the gifts that the global church is bringing cannot be ignored. 
Tani Workington, Mennonite Church Canada liaison worker for Africa, talked about this in her annual report this year. Our brothers and sisters around the world, including Africa, have gifts that we need here in Canada, but these gifts aren't easy to accept in our individualistic culture. They're gifts like slowing down to listen more and speak less, making decisions based more on what the group needs and less on what I want, including prayer and meetings and our work days to hear what God may be saying, giving generously and even sacrificially, not just of our excess, but of our daily bread. We are a clearer refle reflection of Christ when we're together. Can we build relationships to the point of being able to accept the challenging gifts our partners have to offer us? Tani says we are clearer reflection of Christ when we are together. Isaiah's vision is clearly echoing this when all people, all nations are represented at the banquet of God. The center of gravity of the church has shifted in the 20th century. It is now decidedly in the majority world, largely Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Did you know that 84% of Mennonite World Conference is now from outside of Europe and North America? Do we have the ability to relinquish our power to define who is and or isn't Anabaptist? Are we prepared for God's global banquet? Here's a taste of some of the banquet dishes that are being prepared. Mennonite leaders in Vietnam laugh when they tease each other about how many times they've been in jail. Although they talk about the hardship, they also speak very matter-of-factly about being persistent in the face of persecution. They were given courage and patience to stand firm, knowing that being salt and light in the world can sometimes attract oppression. They rejoice that in many ways their persistence has paid off and there is much more trust and openness to their work currently. Mennonite Church Canada witness worker Werner de Young says, One of the gifts that the Ethiopian Church has to offer the world is the gift of passionate prayer. Werner and Joanne have experienced this in the time they have spent at the Miserito Cristo Seminary. They tell of prayer in homes, on the street, early morning gatherings, and long prayer services at church. Nothing is done without prayer. Werner is reminded of the comparison in Revelation between burning incense, which is part of the Ethiopian coffee ceremony, and the prayers of the saints surrounding the throne of God. Mennonite churches in Japan are tiny, but they are stable gatherings of faithful people who are showing steadfastness in a way that is seldom seen in other places. Not only are they a minority as Christians in Japan, but they are also a tiny minority of the Christian community. Yet for decades they have continued to serve sharing their distinctives as Mennonites with the larger Christian community and continue to, continuing to worship together. The dedicated, abiding service of these believers has much to show us. In the Friends of Grace churches in Thailand, lay leaders are supported to open their homes as house churches and places of community. Mennonite Church Canada witness workers Tom and Christine Puvong model this with their home. A sign on their door says that they are a Mennonite peace house. When asked what this means, they describe following Jesus in a way of peace that brings peace with God, peace with yourself, peace with others, and peace with all creation. This has sometimes included taking others into their home for times of healing and mentorship. It includes regular times of prayer and worship in their home. It has meant being entrepreneurial in working with other families on income generation projects to help new believers become financially stable. It has even meant helping sponsor a local youth football club to encourage healthy activities. Go Mennonite FC! Family, neighbors, community, congregation, work, these lines blur when living in a house church. 
If you would ask Anabaptists in South Korea about peace theology, they would have lots to say. In fact, they might talk about mission because their peace theology and mission to the world are closely related. Working in peace and reconciliation is the mission of the church. Through restorative justice training, reconciliation is happening in schools, communities, churches, and policing practices. Anabaptists in South Korea are asked to speak into conversations as diverse as North-South reunification and issues of sexual abuse in the church. If you ask Mennonites in Myanmar about peace theology, they might have no idea how to answer. They might even say that they have no theology of peace, but they act like they do. As the country is torn apart by civil war and ethnic violence, Bible Missionary Church, Mennonite, gathered young people to worship and study scripture together with older leaders in the church. They needed to see what following Jesus meant in the face of violence in their communities. Young people were being forced into military or counter-military forces. At risk of death, many of these young people pledged to follow Jesus in the way of peace. Many were baptized at these gatherings. It was obvious to them, by studying the stories of Jesus, that violence and revenge was not in keeping with the Jesus way. How do we go about accepting and living into the gifts that we are being offered by our global companions? Tanny Workington reminds us that it is all about relationships. An old mission slogan that some of you may remember, uh, across the street and around the world, applies here. The majority world church is at our doorstep. Every Sunday, Mennonite Church Canada worships in more than 20 languages. Global diaspora congregations are looking for companions in Canada. We can walk together and learn from each other. We can learn to know neighbors and colleagues who come from the very countries where Mennonite World Conference is active. Our international witness global companions are looking to deepen relationships, opportunities to connect, to be part of witness support networks, to join learning tours, to share prayer requests and encouragement have never been easier. Your congregation, your faith will be richer for these connections. God's vision told to us through Isaiah is a vision of wholeness, of peace. It is a vision of hope. We can live into that vision as we continue to reach out and fill our cups, fill our plates from that banquet table. This vision is already a reality. Start beating swords into plowshares and get ready for the banquet that will wipe away tears and take away the disgrace of the nations. God is doing something new. Come, join the banquet. From near and far. Oh